Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Every so often, I get an email from somebody asking me how I have gotten to where I am in life. If you don't know, I spent the past five to six years in this industry, and I have a lot to share with you guys. I learned a lot throughout my time in that industry. First, I gotta give a shout out to my very much appreciated Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for your support over there. If you want to get to know me on a deeper level, definitely think about becoming a patron. There are three separate tiers that you can choose from, and it's a great way to get to know me better. I also have a new program on there called the VIP Candle Collective, where members receive a new candle each and every month. So check me out on Patreon. As I said, I do receive emails every so often asking me how to enter that industry. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys how I entered the adult film industry with no prior experience. Now at the time I was doing webcam shows, but I was so new with the webcam shows that I didn't really consider that having experience being on camera without clothes. There's a difference when you set up your laptop on your desk and take your shirt off, you know, and kind of go from there, as opposed to being in a room like this with three other guys that are aiming cameras at you with a bunch of lights shining on you. It's a whole different experience. So let me explain to you guys how to prepare yourself for that experience. There is a video on YouTube. I'm not gonna link it or anything, but there is a video on YouTube of my very first shoot where I was so nervous. I had never done any adult film prior to this moment and I was being interviewed don't ask me why they decided to interview me straight off the airplane, <laughs> like, just shaking in my boots. But in that interview, you can see my armpits are just so drenched, like, they're so wet, and it's very embarrassing. I don't know why they chose to post that interview. I mean, it beats me, but it's up there, <laughs> and um, that interview kind of shows you how nervous I was and how... I just didn't know what to expect, but I knew that I was broke and I was gonna get paid at the end of that week. <laughs> so that's what I held on to. Now, in this video, I'm also going to be mentioning some of the risks that you need to consider before entering this industry. Just with any big leap or decision in life, there's always gonna be risks, but risk-taking is what leads to success. If you don't take any risks and you just stay in your comfort zone, throughout your life, you really won't achieve much. Okay, so let's get started. I have five things that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys that you should really take into account before entering the adult film industry. Okay, so the first thing that you guys should think about before joining the industry is about having an escape plan or knowing why you're entering the industry because it's not forever. The hottest guy in the world will get probably a good five, to eight years in the industry, if you're lucky. And it's very draining after a while. And if you let it, it can start to influence your life in a negative way. So just know why you're entering the industry and what you're trying to get out of it because it will chew you up and spit you out if you allow it to. So having that goal that you're working up to, well, whether it be paying off student loans or getting yourself into your first apartment or getting out of a toxic living situation like which was my goal <laughs> just make sure that you have some kind of a goal that you're working towards don't just enter the industry because you want a quick paycheck because that's not how it works and the industry will only treat you as important as you treat yourself and as you express yourself and portray yourself to the world part of what goes into this first step is looking for potential studios that you can see yourself working in. So for me, for an example, I wouldn't apply to like macho bears because when you look at me, you don't really think of macho bear. You probably think of twink or whatever you think of, probably twink <laughs> or jock, something like that along those lines. So I think going on these websites and scrolling through the models to see if you can see yourself being a model on that website will help you when choosing which studios to apply to and to work for. In the beginning, I also set a goal for myself of this really top tier studio that I wanted to eventually work 
up to and, and get into. And thankfully, I did achieve that goal, but it was nothing like I expected it to. It was just like meeting my hero and my hero ignoring me or just disrespecting me. You know, it was one of those moments. So be weary of that as well. But, you know, have that top tier kind of glass ceiling goal for yourself that you can work up to because it's important to use those goals as a way to gauge your success and your progress. You don't just want to stay at like a bottom tier studio because you re- you'll never work up from there. Okay, let's move on to the next thing that you should consider. Consider the risks. Things posted on the internet are forever, as you guys know. The industry will chew you up and spit you out if you allow it to. There's also many sketchy or creepy producers that you will encounter along the way. So just considering the risks of, and these are just a few of the risks, you guys. There are so many, so many risks. Health risks, mental health risks, lifestyle, future, romantic, relationship-wise. I mean, there's so many risks to consider before signing on the dotted line and appearing in front of that camera for millions to see. People will find out. We're living in 2023. You can't keep anything hidden nowadays. Somebody's kid will find you on this crazy website and send it to them or they'll send it to their friends and they'll send it'll just it will get out. So just expecting that, you know, you'll create a new kind of ego, alter ego for yourself, a new stage name and nobody will ever find out. That's just living in fantasy land. So people will find out that you did this. So that's one of, I think, the biggest things that you need to be cognizant of. You have to be secure in yourself and you have to be okay with your high school friends seeing you in a different light, shall we say. (laughs) All right, so, you know, definitely consider the risk. Consider the sketchy producers. Not all of them are sketchy. Some of them are very professional and ethical but there are some that will try to wiggle their way in and, you know, kind of see what your boundaries are and how far you'll go. So just be weary of that. But I think, you know, that goes in any area of life. You have to be weary of these people that have bad intentions. Not everybody has good intentions, unfortunately. All right, so let's move on to the next thing that you should be aware of. I touched on this point slightly in the first lesson, but I think it's very important to set personal boundaries for yourself because you can really go on to make some regretful decisions if you don't have these boundaries for yourself. And I think that was one of the mistakes I made when I was working in the industry is that I was so set on my goals and where I wanted to get myself that I really wasn't paying attention to these different studios that I was working for. I would just kind of make sure that they were paying me what I was worth. As long as they were going to pay me, I was there. And it wasn't until I got there and worked for those studios where I realized, okay, I'm not coming back here. This is not what I want to do. Let me just finish this shoot week, get paid, and then I'll never come back here again. That happened for a number of different studios that I will not mention. I have worked for more than I can even keep track of. But in the beginning of my adult film career, I was exclusive for about the first two and a half years. So I was only working for one studio. I was signed under a contract. I legally couldn't work with any other studios. Now, when this studio started struggling financially, I asked them if I could go on to work with other studios. And I also met somebody who put me on to an agent, which will lead me into my next point. Consider hiring an agent for yourself. I think having an agent is one of the most important resources in having a successful adult film career because there are so many different gigs and uh, shoots that you will not know about that these agents do know about because they're in those networks and they're in contact with these different producers. And when I hired my agent, that was really when my adult film career took off. And I really started to learn a lot more about what goes into this and the different types of studios and the different types of models that work for these different types of studios because for some studios that you work with the models won't be as friendly and it won't feel as much like summer camp as some of the other studios do. 
and some of them feel very much like military, you know, very strict, like there's a lot on the line, you don't want to make anybody mad, <laughs> like it's very much, you know, strict and, and very professional. And I appreciate the professional studios that stick to the rules and, and really just, you know, stay productive and get things done. There are some studios that just kind of coast their way through the day and get their shoots done and they take a lot longer than they really should and then you kind of are left with the rest of your day to do whatever. I mean, I really do not like stagnant time. So for a while there, I started bringing my laptop with me and I started bringing my camera with me and I would film YouTube videos and on the downtime, I would be editing the YouTube videos because guys, I'm not one of those guys that just likes to sit and play video games for hours and hours. I love video games, but I can't do it every single day, like, for hours. And the same thing with watching movies, like, that gets old to me. I have to go and, like, walk outside or do something, like, <laughs> do a cartwheel in the backyard and listen to music, something. But, um, you know, I really had to get creative there, and that's why I started filming YouTube videos and editing my YouTube videos, and some guys didn't like that. They thought I was, like, not involving myself in the group activities, but it's like, I would never see these guys again. So just set boundaries for yourself. Don't think that joining this industry, you're gonna make lifelong friends. You might, I mean, th there's a possibility for that, but it's not like you're going to work HR for whatever company and you're gonna go to like holiday parties and everybody's gonna keep in touch. It's not like that because everybody in this industry is in this industry for their own reasons, and they're very different across the board. Okay, so also when you're considering hiring an agent, because most, if not any successful adult film star has an agent, consider the fact that they take a 10 to 20% cut of your pay. So each time you get paid from one of these shoots, you don't take home 100% of that pay. It's also important to be able to negotiate don't be such a pushover and know your worth because I had an agent towards the tail end of my adult film career and I was able to negotiate a 10% cut for him, which was still a lot because I was getting tons of gigs, I was always working, and that was doable. But also be aware that the more you pay your agent, the more that they'll scout gigs for you and scout shoots for you. and put time and energy into finding you work. If you're only going to pay them a few bucks and you're only doing a shoot once every couple months, they're not really going to put you on that top tier and promote you and get your name out there. So just be aware of that. Agents do help a lot. And guys, any successful Hollywood actor or singer or, you know, anybody in Hollywood has an agent. That's how they get jobs. Because you as the talent you don't want to be spending your time sourcing out all these gigs and going through different producers and and not really knowing the right decisions to make. These agents typically have a lot of experience in the industry, so they know the studios to work for and the ones to probably not pay much attention to and, and all of that. So let's move on to the fifth and final lesson that I think you guys should know. Now, this is something that is subjective, but overall, I think everybody in the adult film industry needs to be working out regularly. You need to be taking care of yourself. You need to be eating healthy. You need to prioritize your fitness. You can't just sit in front of the couch all day and munch on potato chips and not work out ever and then expect to get all the best gigs in the world. You know, also be prepared to be rejected. I've been rejected a few times, not very many times, but a few times. And it only started happening when I got my agent and I asked him about certain studios that were kind of on my list still of ones I hadn't worked for and ones I, I still wanted to experience. And a few of these studios rejected me because of my look, but also because of some of my past history. Now, I did work with some studios that if I could go back in time now, I would have never worked for. And 
working with those studios tainted my opportunities in the future. So, you know, you have to be aware of that as well. A lot of these taboo studios that focus on just taboo categories that you don't see very often, that are kind of like, Ugh, you know, be weary of working for them. And a lot of the times they don't pay very well either, so be weary of that. I'm trying to, you know, tiptoe around the subjects, but I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. I actually just learned two weeks ago that I'm now an award-winning adult film actor. The particular studio didn't even reach out to me. I didn't even know this. I had to find out on Twitter. So it just goes to show to you that there's no friends in this industry. They don't care about you. The bottom line is all that matters. And just, you know, have your morals, have your boundaries intact, and don't let anybody chip away at them. Okay, and also have a thick skin. <laughs> if anything that I've learned from this industry, it's to have a thick skin. Having a thick skin is just so important in being a successful person in general. I think every successful person needs to be able to work through differences with other people and rejection and just evil in the world because it exists. We all know that. I think the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys about working in the industry is to get as much as you can out of your time in the industry because you only have a good five to eight years tops in the industry. You will get recycled and people will get tired of seeing you and you won't get hired for as many gigs as you once did if you stay in it for very long. Now for me, I got out of the industry before that started happening because I didn't want to feel like I was unwanted or kicked out. So I made my decision to leave the industry and start West Novelties, my candle company. And I'm so grateful I made that decision. <laughs> I also found God, okay, which helped me make that decision. I can't forget God. That'll be a whole nother video if you guys want to hear me talk about the revelation that I had and, and all of that jazz that went into me leaving that industry. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was relatively easy to follow and I hope you got some quality value out of this video. Let me know what you thought about it down below in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know those below in the comments as well. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!